Hello, I'm Nick Longworth, a senior robotics engineer with SICK. This is part of a series of short videos focusing on key challenges in bin picking applications when using SICK's PLB product. PLB is SICK's state-of-the-art 3D bin picking software with many algorithms and 3D camera types to choose from to solve all bin picking applications. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos. Today we're going to be going over the communication part of PLB. So that starts in our system screen here, this PLB tab, and it's under our robot communication dropdown. So the main thing here is going to be this command template file, and this is going to govern pretty much all of the data coming across our socket. So to start with here, our PLB system communicates over a TCP IP socket communication system. So we're looking uh, at a string that comes over and it's going to be in either CSV or XML format. Uh, today I'm going to be looking mostly at CSV. Um, and so this is the communication template file that you'll load into PLB. And there are more uh, out, uh, commands than this. Uh, these are just the commands I have set up for this particular uh, application. And so you'll see up here you have a name of a command in brackets and then what we're calling the command on the robot side um, and so I could make this set state I could make an integer uh, where I did 10 and then 20 for trigger in this case though I'm using this string in order to uh, signify to the robot or to PLB what I'm saying but this is the ultimate command in PLB that it's associated with is what's in brackets and so on set state my robot will send a set state, comma, uh, dollar sign state, and the dollar sign signifies that this is a variable in PLB. It's not a constant. So without a dollar sign, I'm looking at this as a constant, and this is now a variable. And so my state variable has to do with what state I want to set PLB to. So in this case, a 1 would be run mode, a 3 would be alignment mode, and a 2 uh, would be another state uh, and it keeps going on and on from there. Next you have job alias. The job alias will be uh, whatever I have made for my job. So it's which job I want to pull up. Same with my camera alias. I'll call my camera something when I set it up. Um, it could be an integer, it could be a string, but I'm going to call it something and the robot's going to call up that camera. So that way I could use multiple cameras if I want and call up different ones depending on which one I want to use. Um, and so this kind of works its way down in trigger. You'll see it's the same idea, same with all these other different ones. And so these are the ones that the robot's going to send. It's going to command PLB to do something. Down here you'll see a set state message. So my state message here in brackets. And I'm calling that a state result on my robot side, but this is what PLB is going to respond with when it receives a set state command. And so it's going to come back with state result as a constant. And then it's going to give me what the result was. And so the result uh, variable has to do with our error proofing. So a zero means I didn't have an error. Anything else means that there was some error. And that integer is what error is associated with what happened. So you could end up with, uh, say, when you use a, a locate part. You could end with a 113 on your result variable. And that would mean that the uh, PLB system found something. However, there is too much collision for it to give you a result. Um, and then you might move on to a new job. So that's what result is, though. A zero means we're good to go. And then you have state. So this is just repeating what the robot sent as an error proofing method. Um, so it's just going to send back what state it's set to. And this, again, can go down to all these other different commands. You can control what is being sent and what is being uh, received. And so a good uh, indication of this is in our part result message here. My, I can look and send pretty much anything I want about my part. Um, if I'm doing a box, for instance, I could send the size of the box that is found. Uh, but in this case, I'm doing CAD, so I know exactly what what my part's supposed to look like. And I'm sending, say in this case, two different pick poses. Um, I'm telling the robot which pick pose alias I'm, I'm using, along with which gripper I'm using. So in this case, I have two different grippers, an open and a closed one. 
along with many different pick poses that it could choose from. So this way I know what I'm, I'm actually doing so that later on I can maybe put a part down in the same orientation every time using a lookup table because I know which pick pose was used. Um, another thing you could end up changing here, in this case I'm using absolute poses. Uh, when I send the robot these five different points, um, absolute poses are when the robot is given a position in its coordinate system, so it's a position that it can just go straight to. I could also do relative pick poses. Um, so that would be a pick pose in the part coordinate system that I've set up in CAD. And so that would allow me to mathematically do um, the uh, putting down the part in the same orientation every time because I know what, uh, what, where I picked it up in the part coordinate system. That's instead of me doing a lookup table using my pick pose alias, for instance. I could do it using a relative pick pose. Um, so long story short, though, is that there are a lot of different ways to customize PLB's communication to what you are trying to do with your application. And so let's go and uh, do a little uh, hands-on here. And so I'm going to bring in uh, something we call Hercules. Um, this is something you can find in our manual in terms of uh, where to get it, how to use it. Um, PLB will allow you to connect to it through this IP address, 127.0.0.1. It will always allow you to connect through that. Um, so on my computer, I can go straight to it like this. My port number is 6008. That matches here. And I can go ahead and hit connect. And you'll see I've connected up to the system. And at this point, I've already put in my command template file. I would find that using this button here. And that's that same file that I showed you before. Wherever you saved it, just uh, find it and load it into here. And so I'm going to send this set state 110.2. Um, and so again, if you look back at this, 110.2 is going to be a set state of 1, which 1 is I'm going to set to run mode. 10, I want job alias number 10 up and then I want to use camera alias number two. Uh, and so if I go back to PLB, you'll see with this job, I'm on an alias 11, so that's not the one it's going to pull up. It's actually going to pull up this job here. So that's number 10 in my alias. And then it's going to use camera number two when I start using the trigger. And that's what I have set here. So my recorded data, my camera al alignment alias is set to a number two. I can set these as strings, they don't have to be integers. I tend to like to use integers because they're easy to index in a robot program. So I go ahead and go back here, I'm going to send the command, and you'll see that command show up down here in PLB's command window, and I'll get a response. And you'll see that, that set sta set, uh, the state result, 0, 1, is going to, again, correspond with my state message right here. So I have a zero on my result variable. That means that there was no error. And I have a one on my state variable, which means that, yes, I did go to run mode, in fact. So we'll come back here, back to Hercules. And I'm going to run a trigger. So it's the same idea. And then I'm going to do a locate bin. And again, I'm using job number 10. That's my alias. My trigger it was camera alignment alias 2. So locate my bin, got a result here, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and do a part. And this is all just going to line up with that data that's in my command template file. And that all, all that data is available in my uh, manual. And what I just had to do there was put this into evaluation mode because I'm working without license. And that's why all this is set to zero. Um, when PLB is not licensed, uh, the license comes as part of the camera. Um, we can still run it. We can run it offline without any issues. It's just not going to send any data to our camera. I mean, to our to our robot. That's why these are set to zero. So you see, I'm able to locate a part. And so maybe you want to go a little bit further here and do a cycle time analysis offline. And Hercules isn't you know, very good for that. We, we have to do this all individually. There's no good timing functions. Um, this is more of just a troubleshooting tool. So that's when you can go to something um, a little bit more robust. In this case, I'm going to use MATLAB. Um, you could end up using Python, uh, Visual Studio, 
anything that's going to have a socket messaging protocol built in. And so in this case, I have a, a uh, program set up. And this program has everything uh, for a normal application that would be needed. So I already have my messages set up up here. I'm going to open my socket, and then I'm going to run a trigger. I'm going to then run a locate bin, and then locate locate part right here. And then I'm going to display my time. So the time it takes for it to run. So in this case, I'm going to run a job alias 10, and just a forewarning, I'm, not, I'm using a laptop. It doesn't have the greatest processor in the world. It's an i5, four-core, single thread. Um, you use a better system, uh, maybe a six-core Xeon processor, four-core Xeon processor even. You're going to get much better cycle times than what I'm seeing here. And so if I go ahead and run this, see it go to a new image, locate the bin, and it's going to go ahead and locate another part here. See this time 4.15 seconds. Again, better computer, you're going to be down in 1.5, 2 second, maybe even lower than that. So I'll go ahead and run again. A little bit better this time, 3 seconds, but again, you'll be much quicker in that case. CAD is, is typically a very processing heavy algorithm. There's a lot to work with. It's not looking for a primitive shape. So you will have it be a little bit longer than, say, uh, one of our plug-in algorithms. And so if I move to, let's say I, um, I exhaust my CAD function and I'm not able to find any more parts that I can still pick. So I'm getting a 113 back on my localization. Um, I want to go then to another job. In this case, if I'm just trying to switch jobs to be able to uh, get more results, maybe it's a looser CAD algorithm. In this case, I'm going to uh, switch to a circle job. So that's uh, a job alias of 11. And you'll see this is going to change up here to Conrad's circle. When I do this, you see Conrad's circle. And I can just go ahead and you see it move around and around. So in this case, I have a much quicker cycle time. If you see 0.6397, it's much quicker than our CAD algorithm. That's, again, because it's using a more primitive shape. Um, it's not as much processing. It's just looking for a circle. So there's a lot more you can do with it in terms of cycle time uh, to be able to uh, meet your application needs. And this, again, is not a very good laptop, and you're getting a very quick cycle time like this. So... Um, that's about it for our communication, though, in terms of how this works. Uh, there, the only other thing I can say here is you don't necessarily always have to run a trigger and a bin locate. I could say just not do these and then just keep trying to locate a part over and over. And it's just going to keep looking around the same image until it doesn't have anything left to do. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to keep going with this and to optimize your application using our communication features. Um, however, that's uh, where I'm going to stop off here. Uh, if you, I hope everyone enjoyed this. Um, if you would like your product to be featured in one of our videos, or if you would like more information about the PLB product, please contact. Use the contact information on your screen. Have a great day.